So what was her background? Can you tell us a little bit about her? Yeah, she was born and brought up uh, in this area. Okay. Uh, went to Newark uh, High School and grade school. Huh. Uh, there's an area down in Newark called Deendale. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. it's her heritage from okay. years back. Her great 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 grandfather started the Dean Woolen Mills down in Newark. Oh, okay. Are you familiar with that? No. Uh, that no, part no. Newark? No. Where do you live? On East Park Place. It's near the university. But I remember uh, not. It must have been in the early well, 80s. There's a lot of history. Well, I know. In the early 80s when I got there, the gym that I worked out at was inside an old mill that had railroad track running behind it, and it was abandoned by then. But it was clearly, it had been some kind of a factory. And then they moved out of there in about 87 or 88 into a new facility, and they tore that whole thing down. But I know that had been some kind of a factory or a mill or something had a railroad ran right behind it so clearly they could you know, deliver and deliver mm -hmm. things and take things. So I don't know if that was it or not. Yeah, her, uh, if you go back far enough, uh, Joseph Dean came from England, Sandbach, England, came into New York. He taught school for a little while and he came down into Philadelphia mm -hmm. and he worked with uh, uh, a company that was uh, uh, making wool, woolen goods, uh -huh. and so forth. And uh, he learned that trade huh. with that company. Uh -huh. And he was apparently pretty adept so, uh, and knowledgeable. Uh -huh. So he wanted his own business. And he walked from Philadelphia down to Baltimore, I'm told. Huh. And he picked out Newark for his plant. Huh. And then he came huh. down to Newark and started the Dean Woolen Mill. Huh. And that was in the 18, 1850s, 1840 maybe, late 40s, 1850. Huh. And it became a successful mill. It was the biggest uh, mill in that whole area. Oh, I didn't know that, huh? Yeah, you, 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 you got the history. Okay. Go to the University of Delaware and you'll get this history. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I'm, so, I'm so busy doing my own stuff on Greece and Rome or World War II that I'm not... Yeah, but this is the history of Newark. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, he had the mill there and then they, his son continued it. And they had the, what they call the Kaimensi mills, mm -hmm. which are right over here uh -huh. in Kaimensi. Uh -huh. And they uh, lost a lot of it when they had a big fire, hmm. right around the turn of the century, before uh -huh. the turn of the century, uh -huh. had a big fire and that's when the mill burned down. Huh. And that's when uh, they never rebuilt the mill. Huh. Uh, they didn't have any insurance or something like yeah. that. But, but before that time, it was the, huh. the employer for Newark. Wow. They had like 200, 300 people working there in the huh. mill. So anyway, my wife's, that's her family. Okay. Huh. And she had three, her father, and he had two brothers. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, jo uh, her, her father was William. Her uh, uncle was uh, uh, Archie. And another uncle was uh, uh, James? No, no, it wasn't James. Richard, no, Richard's his son. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, he uh, he was military. Mm -hmm. Her uncle uh, was an admiral. Mm. He went to uh, the academy uh -huh. down there, and uh, her father was not. Uh, he was an uh, engineer type guy, mm -hmm. but he was not military. But Uncle Archie, the other uncle, uh, became a very successful uh, businessman, business man who uh, 
lived up in Upper Montclair, New Jersey, uh -huh. most of his life. Huh. So the Dean family has always been in this whole area, huh. either New Jersey or Delaware huh. or nearby Maryland. Okay. Which, and uh, very, uh, uh, very much involved in the military and the huh. Navy part. He was a, uh, a captain. Uh, well, he became an admiral. Uh -huh. He was a rear admiral. Huh. Uh, I have his picture and everything upstairs. But uh, that's the family that yeah. she grew up in. Now, so when did you get married? Uh, 1952. Uh, okay. Came down in 50, late 51, 52. Okay. And my son, first son, was born in 53. Okay. And that's the one who was on the phone, Joseph? No, that's the younger one. Okay. The one that uh, was born first, 53, is the physician. Okay. He's a psychiatrist. He's and what's his name? He's a psychiatrist, huh? What's his name? Mark. Okay. He went to Delaware. He's okay. A good student. Yeah, Super student. Yeah, have to be, yeah. And yeah. then the, the next, hmm? your next one, after Mark? Was Joe. Okay. Well, I lost one. Oh. I lost one. Michael. He died with leukemia. Oh. But uh, Joseph was born in 55, and then the daughter, the last one, was born in 58. Okay. And she has four boys, and I, uh, what do you call it when you, they gave me the honor of uh, getting him commissioned in the Air Force. Oh, okay. I read, uh, what do you call that now? I did something. An well, oath or not an oath? You no, know, when you give him the oath. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I gave him the oath oh, okay. for his commission. Okay. Uh, he's uh, He went to the academy, to Air Force Academy. Oh, in Colorado Springs. Yeah. yeah. And he's a captain now over in Ramstein, Germany. Oh, okay. And uh, the second boy graduated from Rice. Oh, in Houston, boy, Houston, yeah. Uh, he's now just starting into industry working. They all got football scholarships. I don't know, she raised football players. Okay. <laughs> the third one is over in uh, Texas. And, uh, he's in the uh, ROTC at Texas Christian. Okay. And I think he's only got another year or so before he finishes. And the fourth one is the quarterback for... Uh, South Lake uh, High School. Okay. And uh, so she raised four football huh. players. Huh. <laughs> Her husband, of course, uh, played baseball for the University of Tennessee. Okay. okay. So there is a little sports and yeah. complex in them, but it's interesting that all four of them are yeah. footballers. And, and they all, you, you were saying they live all over the place, and one was in. What did you say? One was in uh, Wyoming and one was in the Bra uh, North oh, those Carolina. Are, those are my sons. Oh, right. So you got, let's see, what is These it? These are grandsons. Okay. These four grandsons are all but, the football players. But, you're, but you're, you're, your children, you said you got one in Wyoming, one in North Dakota, yes. one in Tennessee, in Texas. and one in Texas. No, just three. Oh, three. Okay. So the Wyoming, North Dakota, and Texas. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now the one in Texas is my daughter. That's the young one. That's okay. that's her as a child up there. Okay. And where where in Texas is she? South Lake. I don't know where that is. Oh, uh, you know where Fort Worth is. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ten miles from Fort Worth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not too far from Dallas. Okay. Yeah. Twenty miles, twenty five miles yeah. from Dallas yeah. in that area. Yeah. We interviewed uh, one of our interviews was in that area. Oh yeah. A couple of years ago, a Marine. Lived in Lancaster, just outside Dallas, mm -hmm. Lancaster, Texas. Yeah. So, and your wife, you said, just passed. This past July. Yeah. She had a heart problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. And uh, I kept her here. I had her in hospice for almost a year. Yeah. From November till they t 
until she died. Mm -hmm. They're very good people, yeah. the hospice people. Yeah. Yeah, as my mom had a had ongoing heart problems, congestive heart failure, and she finally had a stroke. That's what got her. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, my dad's dealing with probably about the same thing you're dealing with right now. You know, he just he doesn't know. You know, he's sort of lost. So. Finishing out. Well, yeah, you you seem pretty healthy, and you're mentally very sharp. So, I, I, you you keep busy, I'm sure. Do you read? What do you do? How do you keep yourself busy? These I days? read a lot. Yeah, and I'm a golfer. You still play golf? Absolutely. Good. Where do you play? Cavaliers Country okay. Club. That's good. I just joined after my wife died. Well, it's good you can still play. Well, I didn't play while she was alive. The last two years, I had to take care of her. Right, yeah. So you have some regular buddies that you go out there with? And yeah. Yeah. We have a group called the Fog Group. Okay. Something old guys. All right. And uh, there's about eight or ten of us over mm -hmm. here at Cavaliers. Are there any of them, are any of them World War II vets? I think I'm the oldest one, so I don't think so. What I'll do is, in addition to leaving you the information about the Reading Air Show, I'll leave you some business cards. So if you, because obviously one of the ways we get the interviews is word of mouth. I mean, I found out about you from Moyer. You know, you just this is the way you, yeah. we do it, and and we prefer doing it word of mouth. And we don't. One of the things I do, I will not do, is just cold call someone because you don't know who the hell I am on the phone. I can be anybody. Sure. So what we do is send a letter like I sent to you, and that way you can think about it. You can check check us out. You know, you can go online and say, okay, is this guy legitimate? He says he's from Delaware. You can look and see online. Yes, that's true. And it, you can think about it. You know, you're not put on the spot, which is what a phone call would do, and which we don't like to do. And uh, so I'll leave you a couple of cards, and if you can think of anybody that you think might be interested, you know what the experience is now. You know what we do. And if you want to wait till after you get the video <laughs> from us, and you can say, "Oh yes, they do actually send you the DVD," um, that would be great. We would appreciate that. I'm so. Trying to think. Uh, there's only one other one I uh, socialize with. Is Bob Burns? Mm -hmm. Did the uh, Moyers mention the Burns? No. Uh -uh. He was a Navy uh, officer. Mm -hmm. He lives right up the street here. Really? And, uh, okay. I could talk to him. His, okay. I was supposed to go to, uh, out to eat dinner with him last night, and he and his wife. Uh, I don't know a lot about his activities during the war, except he was on. Ships, okay. you know. And That'd be great. I'll, I'll leave you some cards and you can... And, uh, yeah, Bob Burns and, and Dick Moyer. Right. They were like this when they worked for Hercules. Okay. You know, yeah. they both worked together. Yeah, yeah. I did, and I worked in a different area. Yeah, the problem with, with the Moyers interview is he's got, his Alzheimer's is pretty bad, so he couldn't remember very much. Um, and the reason I got your name is because, of course, his wife was there, his son was there, the daughter-in-law was there at the interview. And so they were able to prompt him, and then when I asked the same question, I just asked you, do you know any other vets? They immediately, you know, oh yeah, they, he mentioned, they mentioned you. And that's where I got the address and the name was, as I said in the letter to you, from, from them. So um, that would be great if you, you know, if... if, if well, Dick <clears throat> and Janet, the Moyers, and my wife and myself, we would we socialize for years and years together mm -hmm. out at Hercules because oh. we were both worked for that corporation. Right. And they had a country club there, and I played golf, and they played golf, right. and so forth. It was a it was a social thing. Right. And so we've known each other a long, long time. I knew Dick way, way back. Mm -hmm. But Bob Burns, I I wasn't as close to. Mm -hmm. But he and Dick were close. Okay. They worked together. Yeah. So I would recommend uh, okay. maybe we, you know, talk to him. And okay, see. that would be great. I don't know exactly how many ships he was on, yeah. and I know he was in the South Pacific. No, that would be great. That would be great. Uh, 
why don't at this point um, I'll, I'll close this and then we can make copies of stuff and I'll write down information about the air show and give you some business cards and so on and so forth. Sounds so, like a plan. So let me uh, close by thanking you so much for taking the time to meet with us. I keep saying us because she's usually here with me. And uh, for, of course, your service to our country during the war. We really appreciate what, what your generation did. And, of course, we're trying to preserve that for, uh, for the future. Right. So thank you so much. Well, you're quite welcome. Glad to do it. Okay. Okay, now there were a couple of things that you, we were talking about when we were scanning uh, documents and so on. You mentioned uh, something about Jimmy Stewart. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, Jimmy Stewart was a, uh, an officer in the 445th Bomb Group, and he, had, uh, he was the commanding officer for a short while. I don't know how long, but he had left there and had gone an assignment up to Wing Headquarters, mm -hmm. which put him in charge of more than one group. And uh, his friend, Colonel Jones, was the commanding officer when I got there at the 445th mm -hmm. Bomb Group. But Jimmy Stewart and Jones were close friends. Uh, and Jimmy would come down to the 445th and play the piano and mm -hmm. sing songs and so forth yeah. over at the piano. Yeah. And just generally uh, pass some time away that it was non-combat duty. Right. With the... And uh, so I got to see him and to hear him yeah. relate stories and that kind of right. thing. Right. And it was interesting because Jimmy was a, was a civilian at heart, Jimmy Stewart. He was like the rest of us. We were civilians. Yeah. We were not army trained. Yeah. And we didn't believe in a lot of things like saluting yeah. and yeah. so forth. And Jimmy was one of us in that regard. So there was a lot of commonality in that, in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Jimmy was also a combat veteran. He had flown about 20 missions, actual missions, yeah. same as I had flown. Yeah. And his job later on was uh, in command of uh, several groups mm -hmm. at the wing headquarters. And uh, his main job from that point on was just to get the mission started mm -hmm. w before it left England. Mm -hmm. And then he, would, he wouldn't fly on the right. mission itself. But you mentioned something about him going up in a small plane to organize. He would go up in a small plane and act like a shepherd mm -hmm. to get the, uh, the various uh, uh, bomb groups and the squadrons in the proper order that, he, that they were supposed to be in when they would leave the British Isles right. and go over across the North Sea. Yeah. Huh. And that was his job, to huh. see that they got going properly. But... Uh, I never had, you know, anything to do with that end of the business right. at all. Right. It was, uh, it was just an interesting right. aside. Now tell say. us about the, these uh, hundred mission parties. Yeah, well, uh, the 445th Bomb Group had flown 100 missions before I got there, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and sometime after I had gotten there, they had passed. That's 200 missions. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of missions. Yeah. Now, obviously, that was for the whole group. Right. Yeah. And they had a, a major party. You mm -hmm. know, they everything was uh, was uh, no flying for that day. Mm -hmm. and it was a complete day off. Mm -hmm. And they uh, invited a lot of young ladies from uh, Norwich and nearby communities mm -hmm. to come in and uh, and uh, sell it, help celebrate with us uh, during mm -hmm. the party period. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of food and there mm -hmm. was a lot of drinking going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously uh, they might have bust in, say, 40 mm -hmm. of these ladies. Mm -hmm. And 
at night when they were closing up and trying to get everyone out, they couldn't find 40. <laughs> they were at uh, various locations on the base and uh, unable to uh, find them. Of course, a, a day later, we might have found another 10. And then uh, I think the record was like three days later they found the last one. <laughs> So, it it was uh, it was a, a fun time, in some ways. Right. Yeah. In some ways, of course, if you had another mission to fly two days after that, well, yeah, it uh, wouldn't be such fun. But uh, nevertheless, as you and I spoke, it was it was what happened. Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned a, a low-level mission on a marshalling yard. Could you tell us that again? Uh, it's a I don't very remember interesting the name, story. Uh, the name of it is probably on there somewhere. But we were on a yeah. Uh, it was late in the uh, in the uh, war in Europe that uh, the troops were being brought up from one part of Germany to another part of Germany, and they had to go through this marshalling yard. Mm -hmm to change cars or whatever. These are the German do. troops. German troops, yeah. German troops. Mm -hmm. And so our mission that day was to go in uh, low level. We normally bombed high. What, low level being for a B-24, what altitude? Uh, 10,000 or lower, mm -hmm. 8,000. So this day, when we went in on the marshalling yards, we were at seven or 8,000 feet mm -hmm. because we wanted to be right down where the trains were. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, that was the only time I, I actually saw personnel on the ground mm -hmm. and uh, the activity when we bombed the uh, railroad and watched the, uh, the trains explode.